live your truth. I was a doctor, a medical director. I had made it. Twelve years of hard work and training, and I had finally reached the end goal. I had succeeded. Yet one day, I started having the feeling that this was not it. The feeling that there was something else out there for me. Something else I was meant to do. Something even more right for me where I could make an even bigger difference in the world. I did my best to get rid of that feeling. <laughs> After all, it was much easier to pretend that it wasn't there so that I could keep living the life I had planned and worked so hard for. The life I was supposed to live. Of course, the more I tried to ignore this feeling, the stronger it got. So I had to do something about it. But what could I do? I flashed back to the last time I had such a strong feeling. The last time my intuition demanded my attention. It was a month before my wedding. And I had the sinking feeling that this was not the relationship for me. How did I get here? How could I let it get this far? The feeling had been nagging me for over a year. But I was way too scared to follow it. So I did what I could to figure it out. I worked on the relationship, weighed the pros and cons, asked other people for advice and input. Even after all of that work, I was done with that. The more I tried to figure it out, the less clarity I seemed to have, and the more stuck I felt. Have you ever tried to figure out a challenging decision only to find yourself even more stuck? It happens to all of us. What if trying to figure out the right answer is the wrong way to make our most important decisions? We all do it, especially with those decisions that could totally change our lives. We want to make sure we make the right choice. Or, if we're being really honest, we try to figure it out because we're too afraid to make the wrong one. Yet making our decisions by trying to figure it out only leads to more indecision. I've seen it over and over again, so many smart and successful people getting stuck trying to figure out an important decision for weeks, months, even years. Amanda, the brilliant businesswoman, trying to figure out whether or not to hire this new executive. Henry, the high-powered lawyer in a toxic relationship, trying to figure out whether to stay or leave. Bill, the senior engineer diagnosed with stage four cancer, trying to figure out how to spend the last moments of his life. So many smart and successful people getting stuck in the face of an important decision. The irony is, they get stuck, not because they don't have the answer. They get stuck 
because they are fighting their intuition. Amanda, the brilliant businesswoman, was torn and conflicted about whether or not to hire this new executive that didn't make sense logically or practically, but felt so right to her. The timing was off. He was asking for a much higher salary than they planned for, and his profile didn't match what experts said would be ideal for this position. Yet her intuition kept telling her that this was the best choice for her company. Since she couldn't justify the feeling, she got stuck in an inner battle between her intuition and logic and reason. Paralyzed in indecision for days. Days turned into weeks to the point where she risked losing the candidate altogether. Have you ever had a strong feeling about something it didn't make sense logically or practically. So you hesitated. Convinced yourself out of it. Only later to go, oh, I knew it. I should have trusted myself. So often we think we need to justify our intuition with logic, reason, even other people's opinions. Yet our intuition is far more powerful than we often let ourselves believe. Your intuition processes millions of bits of information at an unconscious level, factoring in far more than what logic, reason, or even experts could ever account for. There's been research and literature on this. The power of intuition over logic and reason, popularized by books like Blink and Thinking Fast and Slow. Yet we don't need the research to prove it to us, do we? These stories, our experiences, show us the power of our intuition. To be clear, I'm not saying to completely disregard logic, reason, or expert opinion. After you've considered all the necessary and relevant information and perspectives, trust your intuition. That's exactly how I helped Amanda get unstuck. She went from feeling completely conflicted, paralyzed in indecision, and at risk of losing the candidate altogether, to feeling absolute clarity and making the best hiring decision of her career. Trust your intuition. That can be easier said than done, especially when our intuition leads us to truths that are inconvenient or even disruptive. Henry was trapped in a toxic relationship with the mother of his children, feeling like a guest in his own house and feeling even more lonely lying next to his wife than he did when he was alone. He had known for years that this was no longer the right relationship for him, but he kept trying, doing everything he possibly could to make things better. Even though his wife refused to meet him in the middle. He kept trying year after year for 10 full years because he felt like he should and for the sake of his daughters. You may be wondering, how could he possibly get stuck for so long? Henry was overwhelmed by all the possible outcomes if he were to follow his truth and leave his marriage. What if things got worse? What if it cost him a fortune? What if he lost his own divorce case? What if he lost his little girls? He had no way to guarantee how it would all play out. 
So it felt safer to stay in the misery he knew. It wasn't until one of our coaching calls that it hit him. The only outcome he could guarantee was the one he'd been living for the past 10 years. By deliberating his decision for so long, Henry had made his choice by default. It was then that he made, he, that it was then that he decided he was no longer willing to be a bystander in his own life. So for the first time, Henry chose to have enough faith in himself, to trust his intuition, and live his truth. Now, he is happily separated from his wife. To his surprise, the relationship is better than ever. And he's spending even more time with his girls. After the separation, the behavior challenges his little one struggled with seemed to disappear. An outcome that he never could have anticipated. You see, so often we make our decisions based on the results we think it will lead to. Yet not only is our ability to predict the future limited, we have no way of anticipating the ripple effects of each action we take. Bill was devastated when he was diagnosed with stage four cancer. At the age of 45, he was told he only had two years to live. The doctors told him to get his things in order and prepare for the end of his life. Meanwhile, he had a strong feeling inside of him that urged him to look into other options. But who was he to question the experts? They had shown him all the evidence, the stats, to prove that this was going to be his fate. As Henry and I worked together, he discovered his greatest regret. He had lived his whole life fulfilling other people's expectation of him, following what authorities said without ever considering what felt most right to him. In that moment, he realized his life was too precious to ever make that mistake again. So for the first time, Bill chose to trust his intuition and started looking into other solutions. Now, less than a year later, he has turned his death sentence into a miraculous story of life. Bill is no longer preparing for his death. Instead, he is now planning the next 50 years of his life. When we trust our intuition and live our truth, we free ourselves from the limitations of logic, reason, even expert opinion, and create the opportunity to live our very best lives. I get it. It is not easy. In fact, it often can be quite scary. It was a month before my wedding, and I was so scared, terrified, to follow the truth my intuition had been telling me. This was not the relationship for me. But how can I do anything about it now? It felt like I had no choice but to go through with it. How can I do that to him? How can I do that to my family, my friends? 
wait a minute. How could I do that to me? I'm the only one that has to live with my decisions. I'm the only one living my life. When I called off my wedding, it was not easy. The aftermath was not pretty. Still, it was the best decision I could have made. For the first time, I was living my life for me. I've come to realize that the benefits of living my truth and the sense of liberation that comes from it far outweigh any potential risks or fears. I feel so much more alive, aligned, so much more me now that I've let go of the life I was supposed to live so that I can live the life I am meant to. It was another leap of faith when I left my job as a doctor and medical director to live my truth. Now, I have the honor of helping other people break free of what's holding them back so that they can live their truth. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I can't. I took an oath to do no harm. I am simply sharing an idea, my experience, these stories, to show you the power of trusting your intuition and living your truth. You get to make the choice. So I wonder, will you dare to live your truth? Thank you.